money going out and not enough money coming in. Oh, <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. They were passing the bucket there. I remembered that I should have uh, told you this before, but they've been counting change and rolling it uh, for the food boxes for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. I get it right in a minute. Hallelujah. And uh, I think they stopped somewhere around $160, and they steal a bunch of pennies about this deep that has to be counted out. Amen. Hallelujah. So give the Lord a hand for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be reading from the book of Hebrews. The 11th chapter. <clears throat> Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And you can hold on there for the 21st verse. We're going to pick up reading today right in the middle of the Hall of Faith, as many people call it. Talking about by faith, Abraham offered up Isaac knowing that God was more than able, amen, to raise up the dead if he had to. Because Abraham knew that God had promised him his seed to come through Isaac. Amen. So he knew that God was more than able that even if he had sacrificed him there on that mountain, God was more than able to raise him back up. And it talks about a lot of other people as well. So we're going to talk this morning about faith. We're also going to talk about thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to start this morning by talking just a few minutes about the pilgrims and their first winter at Plymouth Rock. The pilgrims left their homeland and they came looking for a new world, a new country, a place where freedom was at, where they didn't have to worship God or practice the faith that a heavy-handed king or the law may have put on them. Amen? So they wanted to go somewhere where they could have the freedom to worship in faith. And this would be a great sacrifice. It would not be an easy trip. They would hire a captain by the name of Miles Standish. As a matter of fact, Miles Standish was not even a pilgrim when he started anyway. <clears throat> not even sure. Some historians not even sure he was a believer when he started. He was by the time it was over. Oh, right. Amen. Yeah. After spending some time yeah, with the pilgrims. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But that first winter whenever they arrived at Plymouth Rock and they pulled the big Mayflower into the shore there and docked it as it were that winter would not be an easy one oh, the bill. it would be cold damp food was scarce and not only that whenever they left the boat to look for food or to try and build a shelter they were faced with hostile Indians native Indians that would right. run them off or try to kill them because the Indians didn't want them here Come on. but during that winter History records that almost 50 of the ones on the Mayflower died of a terrible sickness that had taken over their camp. Fever that would cause them to be so, be, be so with chills and shaking so uncontrollably that Miles Standish, his wife, her name was Rose, he would sit by her bedside throughout the winter, at least the time that he had, that he wasn't out defending the Mayflower from the Indians, the hostile Indians, or the that he was out cutting down firewood, or that he was out looking for something to eat because they had hardly no food at all. But what time he could, Brother Dave, he would sit by her bedside and hold her hand, and there would be times that history says that she had chills so bad that she would shake so uncontrollably that she would almost shake completely off of the cot that she was laying on. Then there were other times, Brother Sleece, that, it's, that they say that she would lay there and her fever would be so high that if you didn't see her breathe once in a while, you would have thought she was dead. Mm. And this sickness gripped these pilgrims so hard mm. that they lost 40-something of the people that started out on the journey. So this would not be an easy journey, mm. getting there. And once they got there, it would not be like, oh, great, we've made it, everything's great. No, there was still a lot of hardships ahead of them. Yeah. But they were willing to pay the price for what? For the freedom to worship their God. Oh. Amen. For the freedom to worship without being dictated by a government of how to worship or who to worship. Right. They came to this country and he would sit there and by the time spring got there, Come on. throughout that winter of 1620, when spring of 1621 got there, history says that there only remained five of the wives out of the 18 that originally boarded the Mayflower. Five of the 18 wives are all that survived. 
And Miles Stanis' wife was not one of them. He lost her. The dreams that they had had, some of them, were the view of going to a free country and how great it would be and how marvelous it would be for some of them no doubt seemed kind of dim now as they buried their loved ones. As they dug through the snow and the ice throughout the winter to bury another one that they had lost that they were thought for sure would pull through. As some of them stood watch to make sure they weren't killed while they dug the grave. Mm -hmm. So they bury almost 50 of them and all but five of the wives pass away because of the sickness. And yet through all of this that they had faced, all of the sickness, all of the pain, all of the cold. You see, the Mayflower was a great vessel to get them over here, but it wasn't much to live on. All right. Especially through the winter. Amen. With the wind whipping through the cracks and the knot holes, and the, it just wasn't made to live on. Mm. But all through that, all of their hardships, Sister Nancy, all of their pain, as soon as spring got there, they came ashore, and they began building shelters, they began planting seed, what seed they had brought over with them. Because they wanted to make sure that they would never had to face another winter like the one they just came through. Yeah. So they worked and they worked hard. They worked hard through the spring. They worked hard through the summer. They planted their crops. And it, it reminded me of Nehemiah, Brother Bill, because they were, they, they, they were, there were so many hostile. They, they met a few friendly Indians. Yeah. There was a few that wanted to be friends. But there were so many who didn't that they almost had to... Work with plow with one hand and keep their hand on a weapon on the other one because they didn't know when they were going to be attacked. But they worked through the summer and they plant and they harvest during the fall. They harvest what food they can, what food they have grown. Try to put it up and try to save it for the winter that they know is ahead. They just came through one winter at Plymouth Rock. They know it ain't going to be easy. So they do all of that, and Brother Bill, you would think that these people, and I'm sure there were a few sore heads in the bunch, but as a group, you would think that these people. What do they have to be thankful for? Mm -hmm. I see those people over there, they're, thank, they're bowing their head in thanks. He lost his wife during the winter. He lost his brother. Half of their, maybe all of his family died during the winter. Mm -hmm. Yet they find themselves, Miles Standish and the other pilgrims there, they decide that in the fall they're going to have a Thanksgiving mm -hmm. yeah. celebration. Mm -hmm. Amen. These people who have been, had been through I, would, I won't say hell and high water like the world says because it wasn't really hell, but it was torment. It was torture. It was trial. Amen. It was hard, Brother Bill. Some of them freezing to death. Some of them starving to death. Some of them taken by the fever. And here they are in the fall. Thanksgiving, what's that? It hadn't been easy since they got here. The God that they left their country to come and worship, where was He whenever they lost their loved ones? Where was He when they were starving to death, Brother Bill? Where was He whenever it was so cold in the ship that you sat there and shivered and you had no, hardly any, any shelter from the storm? All right. They knew where He was. Amen. He was with them. Amen? Right. He had not forsaken them. And the greatest thing about this is not that whenever they all gather around the table with not just family, but with friends. We have it now secluded to family. Amen? Mm -hmm. We just say, well, our family's getting together over here and your family's getting together over there. But they didn't do that. They had some of the Indians came in, brought some corn. Right. Amen? Might have brought a big old turkey that they killed out in the field. But however, they, they brought some food. The pilgrims brought some food. And they all gathered around the table. And they all bowed their head to give thanks. And the most miraculous thing was not as you stepped back and looked at this picture, Brother Bill, was not that, well, he survived. That's miraculous. He survived. That She survived. That's miraculous. No, the most miraculous, and that was great. But the most miraculous thing about it, Brother Tommy, was that their faith had survived. Right. Amen. You see, as you gather around your Thanksgiving table this week with your family and friends, many of us have lost loved ones and friends this year. Amen. We've been through trials. We've been through death. We've been through financial hardship. Some of us still going through financial hardship. Amen. Someone said the other day, they heard someone say that this has been the worst year of my life. You may feel like this has been the worst year of your life. You may feel like that, 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 that 
it's been the worst. It's been, you've seen more trial. You've seen more valleys. You've seen more death. You've seen more hardship than you've ever seen before. You may stand there today here in this place or out there wherever you're at and you may be maybe battle weary, Brother Bill. Amen? The ship is battered and the sails are torn. You're battle weary, but thank God you're still standing in your faith today. Hallelujah. That's the most, it ain't the most miraculous thing that you made it to another Thanksgiving. It's that your faith did not fail you in the middle of the trial. Your faith did not fail you in the middle of the valley. That today, even though you don't understand why you came through it. You are still here. You are still standing on your faith. You are still leaning on the everlasting arms of God. You are still leaning upon Him today. He is still your hope. Even though it seems like you've been through everything, your family don't understand why you keep the faith. They don't understand why you keep going to church. They don't understand why you keep reading the Bible. They don't understand why you keep seeking Him because everything you touch breaks and everything goes bad all around you. But it's a miracle today that you have survived another year but it's a greater miracle that your faith remains hallelujah through the storm and through the winter and through the fire and through the torment of the trial your faith still remains today say brother Billy how do you know cause I can see your faith amen cause you're here this morning if your faith was dead you'd have stayed at home amen if you would gave up on God and wasn't believing in him anymore you wouldn't keep trying to get up and go on with every strength that you got in your body. The miracle today is that your faith still remains. Amen. Come on. Amen. The miracle for the pilgrims wasn't so much how many people survived or how that they had finally gotten some shelters built and how that they had been able to grow some crops. The greatest, most miraculous, magnificent thing of that day was the fact that as they gathered around the table, they didn't just look over at their neighbor and say, pass me the turkey. They said, let's bow our heads and give thanksgiving to the Almighty, hallelujah, ever-loving, only God in heaven. Amen. And thank Him for what He has done. Amen. Amen. Come on. You see, thanksgiving, the true test of thanksgiving is not so much us bowing our heads and being thankful for the things that's going around us, but it's us bowing our head and giving thanks in spite of everything that has fallen apart. Right. In spite of the winter that has passed. Amen. Amen. Right. In spite of the trial that we have came through. Yeah. Amen. We are still standing on our faith. Come on. And as I said, some of us have lost friends. We've lost loved ones. Mm. Been sick in body. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Been through hard financial times. Still going through hard financial times, some of us. But just as the pilgrims stood there on that first <laughs> Thanksgiving, Brother Bill, and their faith remained. Mm. Your faith remains this morning. Mm. Amen. You may not feel like it sometimes. You may, feel, you may have felt like this week you might give up before the weekend got here. But you're still here. Amen. You're still holding on. Right. Amen. People said you'd never make it. Yeah. They said you'd never see it through. That's what they right. said about the pilgrims. Right. Amen. As the Mayflower left the port there, many I would imagine many stood by the wayside and said they'll never make it. Yeah. They'll never make it. <laughs> they made it. Yeah. Right. Amen. They made it. Hallelujah. Where did I say go? Hebrews 11th chapter, the 21st verse. We're picking this up right here in the Hall of Faith. Say, Brother Billy, what in the world does this have to do with the pilgrims? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. I hope you'll see it. Hallelujah. <laughs> By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, Joseph and worshipped. 